I walk into my house and slam the door shut. Ugh! What's wrong? Talk to me, Emily. Cornelius walks out of the living room. I don't want to talk about it. Why not? Because I don't, okay? Leave it. Can I get you some wine? You can, but I'm still not going to talk about it. The wine is for me, and I thought you'd like to insult my wine selection like you do every day. Just leave me alone. I walk past Cornelius and head into the living room. I take off my jacket and throw it on the couch. I sit down on the couch and kick off my shoes. They both hit the TV. Okay, well this scene is a delight. I need to work out what happened to make you this angry so I can mock you later. Why won't you leave me alone? I won't because part of being in a relationship is sharing your feelings with your partner in crime. Why? So they can help you. Have you never been in a relationship before? You make a good case. Cornelius takes a seat opposite me. So please, speak to me. <sighs> My mom has a 50th birthday party next week and she hasn't invited me. How do you know that? I knew because I knew when her birthday was coming up, and I asked my brother if any celebrations were happening. And he told you what? Jim told me she was having a birthday party next week. Look, maybe your mom hasn't got around to sending her invites. Come on, a week before her party? There could be other reasons. For example, maybe your mom's trying to have a quiet party for only the family. Uh, hello? I'm her daughter. For God's sake, did you forget that? Am. Did forget about that. That backfired quick. Let's face it. I'm not invited because of the whole Sophia thing. Maybe. I really wanted to be there. I had the perfect present, too. It's all wrapped up in everything. I even got a professional calligrapher to write her birthday card. How about we go on a trip to Paris or London? Get your mind off things. I can't leave my business. Terry is on maternity leave. You could use an agency. The agency I use doesn't have an available florist on their books. Hang on. I own a business empire. So I can make calls and get you someone. No, I don't want to go away. My girl is upset. I will do everything to make her feel good again. Can I do? We're not having sex. I was going to get you chocolate. Oh, sorry. X was going to be the last resort. <laughs> Dick. Is that a no on sex? Get out now! Right, Grouch. Cornelius stands up and exits. Cornelius takes a seat closer to me. He hands me my favorite Hershey's chocolate candy. I take it and put it besides the couch. After I beat, Cornelius grabs my hand and kisses it. Tell me what to do, and I'll wipe away your frown. Should I do my Joe Biden voice impression for you? No, there's nothing you can do. Can I at least tell you the five things I like about you? Why? I want to make you feel better. Fine, go ahead. It won't make a difference, but go ahead anyway. I like that you make me feel like the only person in the world. Well, I'm not spoiled for choice. If you can be myself. I feel the same, I guess. You know the true meaning of us when we're together in each other's arms. Not love? Are you saying you don't know the true meaning of love? You're always there for me. Great. But why did you sidestep that question? What are you trying to hide? What question? Can I carry on, please? You're doing it again. When I hear your voice, my heart smiles. Yet, you won't admit that you love me. We should get started on dinner. Cornelius stands up and walks away. Cornelius Lawrence, get your ass back here now! I get up and follow him out. Cornelius takes out two glasses. 
He also takes out wine, which he puts on the countertop. Finally, he pours me some wine. How have we never had this discussion? I don't know what we're discussing. We've been dating for three months. I told you that I loved you in the second month, and you've never said it back. Maybe I have, and you weren't listening. Cornelius, I need to be in a relationship that's moving forward. It's that simple. It says it isn't moving forward. We are moving forward. Stop pressuring us. Dude, it's written on your face. If we were moving forward, I would have had a key to your apartment by now. Fine. I'll get you a key. It's not about that, and you know it. Come on. You're twisting my balls here. You would have claimed me by now if we were moving forward, but you haven't because you're scared of commitment. It's bullshit. I don't have to listen to this. Look, a part of being in a relationship is knowing your partner shares the same beliefs as you for your future. So I'll ask again, are you in love with me? Can you foresee ever loving me? Cornelius looks flustered. Um, I... Once again, it's a simple question. Look, I like you. Why can't we just settle for that? You've got to be kidding me. You like me? Yes. It's similar to love, isn't it? I'm in love with you. And all you have to say back to me is, I like you? Do you have any idea how insulting that is? It's insulting. It's you forcing me into a position of admitting something that I'm not ready to reveal yet. Is this relationship going somewhere? Yes. I'm 31. Do you see marriage and kids in your future? Maybe. I haven't figured out if I want those things yet. So until you do, you want me to waste my precious years waiting for you? I won't be waiting years. You know what? I need to figure stuff out. We're not breaking up. I need to figure out stuff. I'm not ruling out you being my forever love. Just saying I'm... I'm not ready. I need to work out some stuff. Please, don't dump me. I need to think before I decide. Cornelius walks up to me. He goes to kiss me. I offer him my cheek. He kisses it and exits. I can love you. If you could love me, we wouldn't have this fight. So get out of my house. Cornelius walks to the door. He opens it and leaves. I walk to the door and shut it. After a beat, I fall to the ground and cry. Cornelius sits down and knocks back another drink. Cornelius is drinking in a gay bar. He looks drunk. George sits down next to his husband when he spots Cornelius trying to order another drink. George approaches Cornelius. Stop being a tight ass and give me my drink. The bartender walks off. Don't you think you've had enough? What do you know about having enough? Shut up. Who are you? Cornelius, it's George. I'm your employee. Oh, yeah. You're, you're the gay one. Some would assume you are, seeing as you're in a gay bar. Am I? Fine, I'm gay. Kiss me. Cornelius grabs George and kisses him. Okay, I'm going to remind you of that later. Do you want to know why I'm here? Yes, tell me. I broke someone's heart. You break Emily's heart? Yes. How did you know? Are you a palm reader or a... a Mine stealer. What did you do? Nothing. You claimed to be in love with me, and then she got mad and punched me. <laughs> I doubt she did that. Though Emily does have a temper on her. Not entirely ruined that out yet. Can I tell you a secret? I wanted her to choke me to death. I wanted it so bad. What happened between the two of you? Do you have a lover's tip? She told me she was in love with me, and I didn't tell her that I loved her. Oh. I mean, how can I love someone when I'm Iron Man? I have no heart, George Clooney. My name is not George Clooney. 
But you know what? You can carry on calling me that. It's not like you'll remember anything in the morning anyway. I hurt her so bad. So you didn't tell Emily you love her back because you're not ready to say I love you to her. Is that correct? You people are so smart. You should be the president of America. I'd vote for you. And I'd be your co-president. Oh, we can invade Canada. What makes you think you're not ready? I can't give my heart away and watch another person crush it. What makes you think Emily will crush it? You will. Because everybody I know does it. The folks did it when they died and I was a baby. That hurt. That's one example. It's not, Clooney. I was taken into care by my aunt. She beat the shit out of me like I was a punching bag. Sorry to hear that, boss. I'm sure Emily loves you and wouldn't do that. I have too many scars to take that chance. You should see my back. Gross. Look like a jacket potato. So you doubt that Emily will not hurt you if you commit your heart to her? Yes, Chloe. See, you're brilliant. I want to, I want to kiss you again. Get your bountiful lips over here. Cornelius looks like he might throw up. Mm. Mm. Can I puke in your mouth? Okay, that's enough. I'm taking you to Emily's house, where I'll stay a night on the sofa, and in the morning I'll moderate as the two of you talk it out. Is, is that a no one puking in your mouth? George picks up Cornelius. He starts leading him out of the bar. Finally, a bartender walks over to help George. It's the following day. I walk into my living room, finding Cornelius on top of a sleeping George. I cough. George wakes up and screams. Should I even ask? You shouldn't. But just in case you hear it from someone else. A boyfriend tried to kiss me twice last night. It would make my day if you reminded him of that next time he's awake. Cornelius wakes up looking groggy. What am I doing on top of you? I think we all know why. Cornelius has a frightened look on his face. Oh, stop playing with his emotions, Emily. Nothing happened. <sighs> Not that it wouldn't be good. Do you two want to be alone? Yes. Cornelius looks horrified. I'm fucking with you. So what do I owe this visit? I wanted to force you two to talk it out. I want you to hear Cornelius talk about why he's against committing to you. I'd rather not. I've moved on. Just hear him out while I make a copper. I don't care. Please, leave, Cornelius. He's scared of committing because he's afraid of repeating history. George exits. I said leave, Cornelius. It's true. I'm scared about history repeating itself. What history is that? The history of you being a massive dick? If so, I'm sorry to say you've already reached that echelon. It's the history where everyone I love and care about either left me or hurt me. This is about your mom, dad, and aunt? Yep. I'm not them. I don't doubt that for a second. Okay. So what do I have to do to get you to trust me? I can be anything you want me to be if you just give us a chance. Again, I don't doubt that. My love for you is caring and nurturing. It's unparalleled by anything you'll ever receive elsewhere. It's genuine. I know that. Cornelius, it's real. My love is real. Please don't lose it, or you might never find it again. Life isn't about regrets. Won't regret this decision. Life is about grabbing the chances that are presented to you. It's your job as a human to lay claim to it, not let it go. I don't doubt that. Then fucking love me. Can't. Just can't. I will never hurt you. Know that. So why this standoff? Why are we still pretending we don't mean that much to each other when we both know we do? I will always like you. You're being stupid. 
Cornelius. I'm not ready to commit yet. If I'm not prepared to achieve that, we can't be together at this stage of our relationship. We can still work on it. Don't do this. This thing between us will never work the way we want or deserve. We should go our separate ways and forget each other. I knew my first thoughts about you were right. You're a cruel man. Maybe I am. Look, I'm sorry. So fucking sorry. This is for the best. Cornelius grabs his jacket and walks over to me. He tries to kiss me on the cheek, but I slap him hard across the face. He still tries to kiss me, and I go to slap him again, but he grabs my hands and kisses me. I melt the instant our lips connect, and then as my eyes are shut, he lets go of me. I open my eyes to find he's gone. Cornelius Lawrence has left my house and left destruction in its wake. I stand in tears. After a beat, George walks over and holds me. He holds me as I cry into his shoulder. I've lost my man. There's no hope. There are no sunsets, only clouds, rain, storms, and darkness in this vast land of life. I continue to sob on George's shoulder. There's more to come on The Power of Love, so please subscribe to That Love Podcast on your favorite podcast app to get future episodes as soon as they drop. And also, help us by rating us on Spotify and Apple Podcast. We'd also love for you to review us on Apple Podcast. By doing this, you help us expand our reach to new listeners. We're also active on Twitter, at That Love Pod, so drop us a message there. We'd love to hear from you. And before we sign off, If you love the podcast, please share it with family and friends. Thank you for listening.